Welcome into wrestling, and this is one of my favorite times of the, I guess, maybe once a quarter we do this? I think we're averaging once a quarter where we get you in here. Tony Khan, the president of All Elite Wrestling, uh, and every single time we talk. Oh, we got the fancy cameras out today. I didn't realize that. Oh. The set has graduated, uh, Brandon. Your show yes. is upgraded. I am uh, I'm much more important these days. Well, I think I'm getting much more important guests. So we got Tony Khan here. We're a day ahead of... AEW's Long Island show. You guys are going to be at UBS Arena tomorrow night. Uh, you're we're a week and a, a week and a day ahead of Winter is coming. Hashtag Winter is coming. But really, let's just let's just talk about AEW, man, because it seems like every single time you're in this building, AEW has grown a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, and and it's just it just keeps going. Well, it's Wednesday night dynamite in Long Island, and I think uh, you know we're a week away from Winter is coming, yeah. and uh, we uh, for to be on Long Island with. Uh, AEW Dynamite debuting in such a great arena, in such a great market, right. being back here with you. This is a dream come true for me, and being able to be back in New York with a great wrestling show, it's important because you got the best wrestling fans up here, and, uh, you know, we have uh, great, very, very fortunate uh, luck that we've been able to run some of the best wrestling cities in the world and right. run in New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, and you know, make these home bases for AEW, and there's so many other great cities. Uh, next week, uh, winter is coming in Dallas. Sure. Another great wrestling city with a great history, and really uh, a lot of cities uh, that hadn't been so hot for years. I mean, we had great crowds in Cincinnati yeah. and Austin, Texas, uh, and, you know, Las Vegas. We did the fastest wrestling sellout of all time, and we're going back there. Is that a fact? Yeah. That is, that is fucking fantastic. Oh, excuse me. That is fantastic. You can say that it's bar store. <laughs> yeah, right? I know it's it, but you know I don't want I don't want to put you on a spot. I don't want you to make make you uncomfortable with with my coarse language. You know how I am. I'm just a terrible person. Uh, but we we've, we've got AEW right, and you're in between the way you do business. We're in between pay per views, right? Well, you just had a great pay per view uh, the other day, and you're building up to a revolution, which will be in uh, usually in late February, early March, somewhere yeah. around there. Uh, but AEW also does their Wednesday Night Dynamites. In between these big, giant, huge pay-per-view shows, you have pay-per-view quality shows on TNT. And we're building up to that next week. We're building up to Winter is Coming, which will be headlined by Hangman Page against Brian Danielson. Talk me through the process of just – it's you guys have these tentpole pay-per-views, right? But yeah. we're like – Less than a month review removed from your last one, and you've got this gigantic show on TNT. It's huge, and uh, we had a great full gear pay per view, and and we do these big quarterly pay per views. But now uh, it's a while before the next pay per view, and for fans, every Wednesday night are just going to get great wrestling matches, right. and on Friday night Rampage. And so we consistently are doing these huge events. Right. And I think it, through the holidays, every Wednesday and Friday, people can expect the cards to get bigger and bigger. A and winter is coming. We're only a week away now. And uh, so the huge matches this Wednesday and Friday. Sure. And, and to be here in Long Island, uh, you know, to be in New York and to be on Long Island for the first AEW show at the new UBS Arena, I wanted to pack it with something really special for the fans. And Brian Danielson wants to wrestle every week. Yes. When you have the best wrestler in the world, arguably, and one of the best wrestlers of all time, and he wants to come out and wrestle every week, right. I'm all for it. And he's got one of the biggest matches of the year. Uh, one of the biggest matches we've ever had in AEW is Brian Danielson versus Hangman Page next week. Sure. And he wants to wrestle this week against John Silver in John Silver's hometown crazy so it's the third straight week he's kind of pulled the move of uh you know i'll say it's kind of a dick move he's going after guys in chicago then he's going after guys in atlanta who's from atlanta he goes out for cole cabana in chicago then he goes after alan angels uh alan five angels in atlanta and now he's going after john silver what john silver do to anybody been long island we'll, we'll get to that match a little bit i want to ask you because there's one guy that you have on the roster that's kind of claiming like this is his show like the, this long island show mjf who's a uh, been a frequent visitor here. We've had him twice. I alphaed him twice. I absolutely dominated him in our interview. I please don't tell him that. Uh, <laughs> but he is—he's uh, kind of claiming this is his show. This is a big home homecoming. Is that—is it kind of true? It, there's some truth to that. I think uh, for him, the stakes are huge because yeah. he is the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal winner from the last two years. He's yeah. going for a three-peat, and you know the two final people in this battle royal will go on and mm -hmm. wrestle at winter is coming so it's a lot of line for him 
the numbers are in some ways for him, some ways against him because he's got Wardlow in the match, and Wardlow's one of the real future breakout stars in wrestling, I think. And uh, we've also got Team Taz and Leo Rush, and it's been a really interesting situation around Dante Martin, one of the hottest prospects in wrestling. So a lot happening in MJF's homecoming at front and center in this Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal on Dynamite this week. Yeah, it, it's really going to be something I can't wait to see because, you know, MJF is hes an entertaining guy. And, and I, I, I do wait to see. I can't wait to see what he does in front of his hometown crowd. Do you think there's going to be a, I hate to say the words, heel reaction, face reaction? you think he's going to get the uh, hometown welcome? Or you think I everybody do. in the world thinks he's an asshole? I do. I think he's going to get the big hometown welcome, and I'm excited about it. I think the crowd's really going to respond well when they see uh, MJF on Long Island. And for him to be back on Long Island and – uh, you know, in the new UBS arena on Dynamite with this crowd, yeah. I definitely think he'll get a, a, a big baby face reaction for the first time we've really ever seen. And it's probably the only place it will play out like this, but I think it's great wrestling. And, uh, you know, we all remember uh, in the glory days, the Hart family would, 1997, get, yeah. would get cheered. Mm-hmm. And you knew where I was going before I said it. Right, yeah. And yep. in Canada, they were heroes. In America, they were villains. And... But it's a it's a level of realism to wrestling that it, it should be present at all times because guess what in sports home field advantage home court advantage they matter and you you will have an athlete who might be the top of his game he goes to one city he's booed goes to another city he's a hero I kind of I kind of like that I don't like MJF he's very mean to me he made me cry last time he was on the show well Tony Schiavone had a great line uh, as we were building up a really important show sure uh, I came up here and I visited you guys to promote. Uh, a huge Rampage event we had, and we had CM Punk versus Matt Seidel. Right, and it was a right. great match. And in the buildup, Tony Schiavone said, you know, when you wrestle CM Punk wherever you go, he's the home crowd, he's the home audience. Right. Now, there's if there's ever an exception, this might be it. But I think CM Punk is also going to get a, sure. a, a very, very loud reaction here. And I have to say what's been happening with CM Punk and MJF on AEW television is something that I believe is really captivating people. You know, on Thanksgiving Day, man, right. the, like I, I looked at the YouTube on Thanksgiving all yeah. day. The top two trending videos in the world were the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade right. and MJF and CM Punk going toe-to-toe on the mic. Well, that's all my house because I have four kids. They all wanted to watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade, and I was just watching that promo back and forth <laughs> uh, once again. Uh, so uh, this was actually the next question because you are at your core. Before you get to anything, before you get to owning anything, thing or you're a wrestling fan period that's that's the start of you right when it comes to this business i know that you know you you've signed these guys and you 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 employ these guys but when you saw mjf and cm punk with that 20 minute dueling promo back and forth the fan in you had to just be geeking out because that to me that's one of the best back and forth promos not in AEW history in in the history of wrestling yep. that's how good it was yep. i'm not just blowing smoke either because mjf was throwing bombs um cm punk it was it was incredible You have to see that first and foremost before even the businessman in you, right? Yeah, absolutely. And what's great is we're building to something people really want to see. Uh, There's great television happening every Wednesday and every Friday in AEW. And what's happening with CM Punk and MJF, what's happening with Brian Danielson and Hangman Page, it's it's bringing in new fans. And for the fans of the show, I think everybody sees – Right now is the hottest time we've ever had in AEW. So how's it been? How's it felt with Hangman going out there as champ? Because last we talked, it was before that he, you know, he he won the belt from Kenny Omega. Now we're going on, I guess, about a month since he, Cowboy shit's been on top. How's it been? I, I think the television with Brian Danielson and Hangman has been some of the most compelling TV in wrestling. And Brian Danielson, again, one yeah. of the great wrestlers. For him to win the Eliminator tournament, to him be the challenger to Hangman. Right. It's a dream match, and for Hangman to have his first defense, you know, he he had such a long road to get here. He was a great champion for us as a world tag team champion. Sure. Kenny Omega and Hangman Page were dominant. They they had the longest reign as tag team champions. Had what I consider still to this day the greatest match in AEW history. In my opinion, the Revolution tag match in – uh, it was 2020 or 20, uh, years? Yeah, Revolution 2020. 20, I think that's the best match in AEW history. That's my humble opinion. Yeah. I'm just a fan. Uh, but, yeah, you're right. I didn't mean to cut you off. But Hangman's been on a hell of a roll. Now he's got the big belt. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw Kenny Omega and Hangman Page had this great run as tag team champions. Yeah. And then they split. They both made a run for the world title. And it was Kenny Omega that got there first. He won the Eliminator Tournament a year earlier. Sure. And, uh, you know, earned the shot at the title. 
and at Kenny Omega at Winter is Coming last year became right. the champion, and now things have gone full circle. Hangman went out this year, won the casino ladder match, earned right. the title shot, won the world title, and now – the Eliminator Tournament winner at Full Gear, this year it was Brian Danielson, yeah. and Hangman, you couldn't ask for a tougher or better match for his first defense of the world title, and it could be his first, could be his last defense of the world title in Dallas at Winter is Coming on Wednesday Night Dynamite. But what better way in your first defense of, of the AEW title, what better way than to go out against what you, you've called and, and a lot of people call the best wrestler in the world? Listen, Brian Danielson, and he, when he arrived in AEW, he didn't come to play nice. He didn't come to, to kiss babies and shake hands. He didn't come to do all that. He came to kick heads in, and he's been doing that. What better way than Hangman Page against Brian Danielson? What a great free TV match. I guess it's cable TV. What a great TV match. Yeah. What a great, and is there not any – in you that wants to save something like that for the pay-per-views? It's important because uh, Dynamite and Rampage are a huge part sure, yeah. of the lifeblood of AEW, yeah. and it's more important than ever to have great matches on Dynamite and Rampage. We've offered great cards. Winter is coming. Right. Uh, this coming week on Wednesday Night Dynamite is going to be one of those great cards. We have a great show on Long Island to build up. Right. Winter is coming, and I think great moments ahead this week. And really – uh, all through the holidays, the Holiday Bash is coming to Greensboro, and the Holiday Bash Greensboro huge plans. The holidays in Greensboro to make that hopefully a tradition, just like we've made Thanksgiving Eve in Chicago right. a tradition. Maybe we can make a Holiday Bash in Greensboro. I mean, you didn't choose Greensboro by accident either. No, we didn't. I All really that? thought it was a perfect place to do the Holiday Bash, which is going to take place over Dynamite and Rampage across the holidays. Which uh, you seem like a big Christmas guy to me. I might be. Um, yeah. I yeah. have Again, I have four kids. I Christmas is a big moment in my house. Well, I Christmas is big in my house, What's too. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Uh, Home Alone. Really? Yeah. See, I pegged you for a guy like me. I'm National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Well, you know, Die Hard's a great Christmas movie. I think okay, we can Tony. all agree on all right, that. All right, Tony. I just uh, You don't have to spread your propaganda here. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Home Alone. Home Alone. It's uh, good. No, a Die Hard is Die Hard's great, right? You know, but, but even if, if you say Die Hard's a Christmas movie, I still think like Home Alone and Christmas Vacation are bad. No, uh, as movies or as Christmas? Because I agree, as Christmas movies, those are, you know, know. Scrooge. Once you see him, Scro Scrooge, Scrooge with, with Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. Yeah. yeah. We really did live in an era of great Christmas movies back then. I mean, all these movies came out in a, a four-year stretch. <laughs> Home Alone 2. Did, you a big Home Alone 2 guy? Yeah, Home Alone 2 is kind of like Major League 2 where it's very repetitive and the plot is similar. But, you know, if you enjoy the first movie, you'll probably enjoy it. And there are some new things both movie introduces that are very strong. Like, you know, you, you have Parkman who comes in in Major League 2. Right, yeah. Whereas then, you know, in Home Alone 2, they introduce Tim Curry. And sure, it's like, yeah. hey, man, Parkman – in Major League Two and Tim Curry Parkman's in Home Alone dick. Two, and, and Tim Curry's a dick in yeah. Home Alone Two. So you know they introduced these great new characters, but in the end, you got to go with the original probably. The one thing about Home Alone Two, it was good to see Kevin McAllister get a road win because a lot of people thought he was a home team player, a home game guy, but he got a road win. I mean that was impressive. I think it's like CM Punk where <laughs> he's really over in Chicago, but then he comes to New York and he's also really. Well, McAllister over. from Chicago too. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like it's like CM Punk where it's like a Chicago guy and he's super over in Chicago, and then he comes to New. York you know how because like we did uh all out and punk Russell right. Darby in Chicago it was huge yeah. and then we did Grand Slam in New York yeah. here yeah. at Arthur Ashe Stadium and he wrestled powerhouse Hobbs that's right so he's like he's you know he's a home team everywhere CM Punk just like McAllister that I feel like you and I could just talk movies forever because Major League Two Major League Two is the most watchable disappointing movie of all time it is the most watch like it's not that great because this is the same thing but <laughs> the formula is so good that I'm going to watch it every single time. It introduces time. some good new characters. And it, you know, it's not just Rube Parkman. Baker Rube Baker is what yeah. I was going. Yeah, Rube is great. And then and then Harry Doyle, you know, he he resurrects it towards the end. It takes itself a lot less seriously. But, I mean, the original Major League is a great movie. Major League 2 is not a great movie, but there's, like, a lot of but great the, moments. My problem is take, making making Ricky Vaughn have his little existential crisis. I didn't need that. He I needed him to be, like, a motorcycle riding badass for the rest of his yeah, life. Yeah, but what about that moment when he looks in the mirror? Like, and he asshole. says, what an asshole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like, Jake, yeah, Jake. Jake leaves and he's like, "What an asshole!" Tony, I've like had he's that talking about Jake uh, until he's talking about yeah, himself. Yeah, then he realizes he's talking about himself. I, what an I, asshole. Uh, I've had that moment several times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody leaves, "What an asshole!" Just look in the mirror. Oh fuck, there he is. <laughs> what an asshole! You think April's too early for Roger Dorn night? <laughs> uh, you're just dropping dropping lines here too. <laughs> it's a great movie. Um, is it? This is guy it? used to pitch you inside, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
All right, Roger so Ball. let's let's get back to because we do have a little bit of business uh, to 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 attend to. Uh, the Long Island show, of course, winter is coming next week. Um, and the move, of course, that something that's really important, Brandon. I have, uh, you know. And hey, he's, to he's got some big stuff here. <laughs> uh, this is the final month of yeah. Dynamite on TNT. Rampage is going to stay every Friday night on TNT for a long time. You're headed to TBS, but Dynamite, the the flagship, the the OG, moving to TBS in January, and this is the final month of shows on TNT. And I want to go out with our best month yet. I want people to remember the last month of Dynamite on TNT is the best month. So we're hitting a lot of big markets. Like I said, we'll we'll have, uh, you know, we'll be right. on Long Island. We'll do Winter is Coming in Dallas, a holiday bash in Greensboro across Dynamite and Rampage, which is a special Christmas night Rampage. We're not going to have Friday night Christmas oh, Eve. Right. It's, Rampage is going to end up being on Saturday night on Christmas, which is fun. We'll have some great wrestling on Christmas for everybody. And then the final Dynamite ever on TNT will be – uh, on December 29th in Jacksonville, Florida at Daly's Place. Oh, back at home, huh? Yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. That's it's going to be really good. And we're coming back here, and hopefully I'll see you. Yeah, you'll be back in Newark in, in Newark, uh, January, right? And that'll be really fun, and we'll start the Dynamite on TBS run in Newark with what will be a huge show to start Dynamite on TBS. But ending on TNT in a major way yeah. is important to me because this run of doing these shows every Wednesday on TNT has been the greatest – Thing in my life it's been man. fantastic it's, it's been, been fantastic the, the highlight of my life it's man. been so needed in the wrestling universe and really the entertainment universe um so you're gonna you're gonna let me do a week with y'all like uh around your next pay-per-view please okay, i would love to have you come it's awesome um so i just want to throw a couple of ideas before we get back to some AEW stuff I'll throw a couple of ideas at you okay, okay. I, I threw this one idea at adam cole the other day because uh he's from panama city but i'm gonna throw it to you because you know i see where you're going with this uh, club la vila hey hey <laughs> Me and you go halfsies. We buy Club La Vila <laughs> and we run some show. We run a show at La Vila because how awesome were those shows, right? Club. I, I don't know if it's still standing. It might not be still standing. We can build it. It's not crazy. It's Club not La a Vila. Crazy thought. I mean, I knew where you were going. A W Spring started. Break at Club La Vila. <laughs> it's not a crazy thought, man. It's not a crazy thought. And it would be a great uh, to go with. You these. beat me to this idea, didn't you? You've already bought the damn building, haven't y you? You know, it would be a great place to do a St. Patrick's Day <laughs> Slam. Uh, you know, last year the St. Patrick's Day Slam in Jacksonville with Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker lights out match. One of the great main events. One of the one of the absolute all time main events. Yes, and one that sent. Uh, Britt Baker on her way to the to the stratosphere. Of course, she was probably going to get there anyway, but my God, she's she's been incredible. Okay, now you're going to be on TBS, though, idea number two. And you've already apparently bought <laughs> – you son of a bitch. Um, so, idea number two. You're going to be on TBS. Saturday night show starts at 6.05 Eastern time. It's a shame the Omni doesn't exist anymore. Well, I, I don't know if the Battle of the Belts will be starting at that time, but we are bringing uh, you know, back Saturday night wrestling, not only with a Christmas episode right. of Rampage on Saturday night – but also next year, the Battle of the Belts starts January 8th, and yeah. every quarter we'll have a big Saturday night Battle of the Belts special, which I think is going to be a great throwback card. So um, are you are you old enough like me to, to have uh, been in the WC, WCW Saturday night? Era. Yeah, yeah, big time. Six oh five Saturday big night. Big time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I just, I just and, and and also the power hour. So it was five oh five in in Illinois where I grew up. I'm sure. the Central Time man. Well, I was too, but I I always you know on TBS they always would say six oh five. But it was, so they've I, I would get it at they, 5.05. They, you know, we've lived on the East Coast so long, both of us. This I live is in the worst. This now. is the worst time zone. You agree, right? The East Coast. The Central Time is the best time zone. I. They're both great. They're both great times. I, I'm so used to now living on Eastern Time because of you know li moving to Jacksonville and sure. and being on the road. You know, Eastern Time Zone is very prevalent, but the Central Time Zone kind of rules. Yeah, you're not wrong. Central's five, great. Five oh five was, it, and also the Power Hour started in the morning at eight oh five. Yeah, it did, which it was early. Was. All right, let's get back to uh, some serious matters. Uh, how, how's Mox doing? Uh, thanks for asking. Today is his birthday. Happy birthday to uh, John Moxley. I wish my friend a happy birthday. Yeah. And, I, you know, from talking to Renee, he's doing better and better, Good. which is awesome. And uh, so excited about that. Don't know that there's been anybody with as much universal support from the, the wrestling business as, as this guy. You know? In addition to plugging Dynamite on Wednesday nights and Rampage on Friday nights, I also came here uh, while he's not here to plug his book. Because sure, he's yeah. my friend, and I'm not seeing a dime out of it, but – I just think it's the best wrestling book I've read. Brian Danielson, who uh, is, I think, one of the most intelligent people in wrestling, in addition to being one of the best wrestlers, 
uh, who will be in action this Wednesday and next Wednesday and most Wednesdays and, and some Fridays. Right. Uh, he happens to think it's the best wrestling book he's ever read. Wow, that's high praise. And then for he's read pretty much every wrestling book. You also told me that you thought I was one of the most intelligent people in wrestling. Well, you're a very intelligent person, and you're also a very intelligent person in college football. Thank you very much. By the way, Brett Bielema, good start. Thank you. He's good up start. to really. Thank you. He's doing really good stuff. Good start. You know, it was hard. The game he was out. He had he was out with COVID mm -hmm. against Iowa, and I think we could have won the game. And I really do. It, and and if Brett had been there, I think we we would have had a good chance to be bowl eligible because the team went five and seven and lost a close game on the road at Iowa. Where I do think if Brett had been there, it might have made a big difference. College football show in Champaign this year. We could. You know, the AEW. We did a little college football show. It's on YouTube. It was fun. I was I was very fortunate to get. Highlights cleared by yeah, a lot I was of them. Mad you didn't ask me to do that with you. Well, it was Jr. Shivani and Taz really had dibs, and and I would have been great. Maybe. Yeah, but what have Jr. Shivani and Taz done in this business, Tony? What have, what have they done in the wrestling business? Well, to be fair, well they got a combined ninety five years experience. You, I've got six months. You'd be a great to cover now with Jr. We all wish Jr. the best. Yes, I think indeed. A recovery from radiation treatments, and Jr. is aiming to come back for the final Dynamite on TNT in ja Jacksonville, his new hometown, where Good. he's adopted. You know, and, and I can't wait for JR to come back. And uh, we've had some great people filling in for him. And, and I think Taz and, uh, you know, many of the guests have done a great job. Right. But having Tony Schiavone and Excalibur there in the booth, it, it, it's so important. And having such depth on a team pays off. But nobody can ever fill in or replace JR. He's a legend. I asked Adam Cole this the other day, and, and he was great with, with his time. And, and a lot of people watched that. But I'm going to ask you kind of a, the inverse of the question. I'm going to ask you this. How, with all the new roster pieces, with all the new toys you've acquired, with all the new talent that you've got, and it's just how hard is it to stay patient and tell the stories that need to be told as opposed to just throwing everybody out there and getting these great matches right off the top? Because, you know, with Adam Cole, there has been – you can tell there's been a patience about it. Because Adam Cole, I could give you 25 good matchups in AEW, but you've you've patiently gone about it. There was the Jungle Boy arc, and now I believe there looks like there's a Best Friends arc uh, developing with Adam Cole. Uh, you're do going arc to arc as opposed to just – throwing them out there and getting these great matches. How hard is it to be patient in that scenario? We've been patient. I think you saw when you yeah. mentioned Adam Cole and Jungle Boy, man, they've had some amazing matches yeah. between them. When you look at uh, the singles match they had in Newark and then right. uh, whether it's the six-man tag at Grand Slam or the – uh, the street fight, the, street fight mm -hmm. uh, the false count anywhere. Oh, the false excuse count, me, sorry. Sure, but uh, sure, y your point is is right. The fo the amazing false count anywhere trio that match that could have gone to the street. They did also, and 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 uh, and then there were also uh, some amazing matches along the way, including a main event on Rampage that I thought was outstanding yeah. with uh, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish, uh, you know, taking on Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, which was one of the best matches we've had on Rampage. Bobby Fish has fit like a glove, too. He has. Bobby Fish is coming to AEW, and Bobby Fish and Adam Cole have yeah. been a great team. You know what's amazing? They So they've been in all these trios matches, eight-man mm -hmm. tags on television together. You know, that match was their first tag match, that Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus match, and then uh, their second tag match ever on television was against Orange Cassidy and Wheeler Yuta, as you astutely uh, observed, uh, as they've been dealing more with the best friends lately. But uh, – they had teamed on lots of house shows, but right. as, a, as, a, as an actual straight two-man tag team, that well, was their right. first two matches on television, and boy, are they a well-oiled machine, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish. Well, and, and it makes you think. I mean, it really makes you think. They And, and uh, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish have a lot of experience working together, and, man, they've – They've been a great team here, the Young Bucks. We have a lot of really exciting things happening with those those guys. And also now, like you said, with Orange Cassidy and, and yeah. the best friends and, and what's happened with them joining Chaos in New Japan. Which I, I'm I'm gonna I'll have an interview out later this week with the best friends. I gotta ask that, but that's a that's a hell of a a, a, a collaboration right there. Yeah. I, I don't uh you guys keep circling around to this old forbidden door, and just uh, it's been kicked in like five or six times, and you just keep just keep circling around there, and and but right when you think it's forgotten, here comes somebody else. It's been it's been an interesting. Thanks, man. Answer. And I, I you understand and, what and I'm saying. I do. And to answer yeah. to give a better answer to your previous question, instead of just uh, so grand, I give a very specific answer about Adam Cole. It's it's a challenge not to put the new free agents, and, and all the top wrestlers right. in, like, the huge matches every week. And right. there is something to be said for having the biggest matches on television, which we're building to, stuff like Brian Danielson versus Hangman Page for the world title and giving Hangman such a huge match on television for everybody to see right, right out of the gate. And uh, we're building towards huge matches on TV every week, and I think it's important to build to them. And along the way – 
there's a lot of great wrestling matches along the way too like i said that aren't necessarily the end all be all in everyone's mind and then it, when you watch them whether it's some of the great matches like man what a great match i, I brought up that adam cole and and uh Bobby Fish versus Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus match. Right. They've had a couple great tags, one against Orange Cassidy and Wheeler Yuta I thought was outstanding, but also, man, what a great tag match last week on Rampage with FTR against Pac sure, and yeah, Penta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Penta and Pac, outstanding. And Malachi Black coming in at the end. I mean, that was crazy. Uh, you know, you, you've had so many guys brought in. You just mentioned, uh, you know, Malachi Black, Adam Cole, Andrade, El Idolo, uh, on and on, CM Punk, Brian Danielson. The list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, out of the guys that you brought in this year, and 2021 has been a great year of growth, has anyone surprised you with what they brought to the table? Like, like maybe they're doing more. Like you had an idea of what this guy was about, and then you get him in AEW, and he blossoms even further. Does anybody stick stick out in your mind as far as that description? Yeah, there's a, a there's a couple. Uh, well, first of all, um, Adam Cole, who we mentioned before, this is somebody who I had so much respect for, and I think is one of the big stars in wrestling and I think has the potential to become the biggest star in wrestling. He's so, so uh, electric in the arenas. The fans care about him so much, and he's had great awareness. He's been on television before he even arrived in AEW, which is great, and fans from all over the world love him. He's wrestled all over the world. Right. I think he's somebody who I already believed could be a top star and who I still believe has so much to bring as a new free agent who just came in. And also, Ruby Soho came sure. in at the same time on the same night as Adam Cole at All Out, which is the biggest pay-per-view we've ever done, and they both yeah. debuted there. And uh, I think Ruby Soho has brought so much to the table, and boy, do I enjoy working with CM Punk. Sure, I, I would imagine you do. I remember you texting me back in the summer saying, uh, Brandon, uh, in your wisdom, should I sign Adam Cole? And I was like, fine, Tony, do whatever you want. And so you're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. It's a good uh, call. <laughs> it was a good call. It was a very good call. Um, diplomatically, I guess you'll answer this. I know you will, but you've built a reputation for delivering some great surprises in this business. You got, you got any cooking here? Got yeah. Any, that, you, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yep. What an answer. Yeah. So got we, some good stuff. We coming. got some good stuff coming. Yeah. They got good plans for the future and good surprises and great moments and and most importantly, great wrestling matches. There's going to be a lot of great wrestling matches in the coming weeks just before the holidays. Yeah. And growing up, we didn't always have that, man. Like not, there wasn't always great wrestling every week. There would be great stories and you'd build right. up to some great matches, but you didn't necessarily every single week. See it was great intermittent. Wrestling. It's a great era we live in where you can find great wrestling on TV every week. And we try to put great matches on every week. And, and then we're building towards not just great matches in the ring with great moves and great wrestlers, but – Big matches with the biggest stars wrestling the biggest stars on television. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than the stuff I have planned for the rest of the year. We're going to have some of our biggest stars wrestling some of our biggest stars, and you won't have to pay for it if you have cable or satellite or can watch TNT. It's going to be huge. So I think we're running out of time. Uh, she, she's looking at me with a discerning yeah, eye. She's very there, mean yeah. to me. Uh, but but uh, one more question. We've talked about the holiday season, and we got winter is coming next week, a huge main event. We've talked about everything that's going to happen in December. But if 2021 was a big step forward for AEW, what does 2022 have in store for us? 20, I mean, the company is going to keep growing, and the wrestling business will, I hope, continue to grow and continue uh, what is a great era. You know, the sure. last few years, uh, we've grown into it, and I think uh, the wrestling business has seen growth as a result of the growth of AEW. We had a crazy – uh, thing happened to all of us in the world and AEW happened to be a surging startup right that was on fire when the pandemic hit yeah and i really worked hard every week to maintain great shows through daily's place and found i think a unique way to keep fans at home engaged by at first using the wrestlers at ringside right. as, as the audience so that it wasn't like a totally empty building and then eventually finding a safe way to bring fans back outdoor venue like I told you before, like a drive-in movie with the fans spaced out. Oh, I went there. It was and, it was it was wonderful. It, and not one COVID transmission, and thousands of fans saw dozens of shows through that year. And I'm really proud of that that we found a way to safely get the fans back at the live events. And now we're back on tour, and the shows are bigger than ever. We've done our biggest pay-per-views back to back, the biggest shows we've ever done. And I expect a huge year for us to you know Dynamite moving to TBS next year. Yeah. Like I said, I want to go out with our best month we've ever had on TNT and then have huge plans to start out on TBS. So, uh, you know, with all the things happening in AEW right now, whether it's uh, Hangman Page versus Brian Danielson, building towards hopefully 
MJF versus CM Punk. Sure. Exciting, like you said, Adam Cole, maybe against Orange Cassidy and the best friends to have Adam Cole and the Young Bucks and all the exciting possibilities, the, the elite, and if I may say the Bullet Club, chaos mm. and the best friends. A lot of exciting stuff out there. The Forbidden Door, as you mentioned, and also uh, to have – the greatest woman star in all of pro wrestling, in my opinion, the world champion, Dr. Britt Baker, representing us right now. She's going into a great... And uh, some incredible challengers on the horizon for her. The former, the first world champion, Riho, one of the best bell-to-bell wrestlers on the planet. And mm -hmm. she's had, what a great match there, uh... Black Friday deal match was on Rampage. What a yeah. kick-ass match on Rampage, Britt versus Rio, and I can't wait to see it. And frankly, just so you know, if you didn't know the stat, Britt has never won a match against Rio. I did not know that. I didn't realize that. She's lost every match she's ever had against Rio. Well, and, and so Rio is going to pose a very tough challenger. And this, you know, what a huge match, Rio versus Jamie Hayter, ahead of the world title match this week. Rio And uh, I do think, in addition to having the best world champion, what a great scene we're having. Many people have said... And I agree with it personally. The best women's wrestling tournament we've seen in America in a long time, the TBS Championship Tournament. Certainly the most seriously presented uh, women's tournament that I've seen in, in America this year. And certainly the best uh, as far as product, far and away, not even close, not even close, far and away the best women's tournament. Uh, and the division has come so far, you know, just, and you didn't even mention, like, uh, Chris Atlander is doing great. Um, uh, what a great Ru match, Ru Ruby, Ruby Soho. Soho is, yeah. Yes, uh, and, uh, you know, Thunder Rosa. It's just so many great contenders there and and we're down to four in the tbs championship with you know nyla rose and ruby soho and jade cargill and thunder rosa so we could sit here and talk about your product and wrestling in general and possibly major league movies without talking about back to the minors but we could possibly <laughs> sit here and talk about that forever but i know we, we are on a schedule you're in new york you're in on long, uh, long island tomorrow night dynamite will be on tnt 8 p.m eastern from long island tomorrow and then next week in dallas winter is coming Nobody does these big shows like this guy right here. I'm not just blowing skirt up his or blowing smoke up his skirt. Blow skirt up my smoke. Not whatever. You know what? I say that so much. I mess it up every single time too. So anyway, AEW is doing great, and this was Tony Khan. It's always fun and great to have you. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure, and hopefully see you soon. Uh, very good. That's wrestling. <laughs>